Thank you, Brandon. And uh, thank you to the organizers of this. Uh, this is my first night out, and uh, it's amazing. You guys are doing a great job, and uh, it's a privilege to uh, give a talk in front of you guys and to see so much support and excitement for astronomy. And so I thought I'd talk about something we may all have in common in this room, uh, which is an interest in galaxies and beer. And so um, uh, my fantastic wife has been listening to me uh, talk about galaxies since the day we met and uh, was listening to me when I was putting this presentation together and helped uh, in many ways with the slides. So thank you. <laughs> so uh, a lot of times in something technical, um, people use a word that's very common to everyone, uh, but the connotation is totally different and different from what you're probably thinking about. And uh, so in this talk, I'm going to talk about metals, which uh, to astronomers is probably different than what you might think about. And so uh, metals are atoms. So here's a periodic table, and they're defined by their origin. The two most abundant atoms in the universe are hydrogen and helium. They're created in the Big Bang. The majority of it is created in the Big Bang. Hydrogen totally created in the Big Bang, and most of helium. Anything that is not hydrogen and helium is a metal, to an astronomer at least. <laughs> so all of this is a metal. <clears throat> and um, let's see if I can keep going. Yeah, so we have hydrogen and helium. And the most abundant metal in the universe is oxygen. And so when I talk about metals today, I just mean oxygen, just the atom of oxygen. I'll keep it simple. <laughs> and. In color code, you have the origin of these elements. And so oxygen is different than hydrogen and helium. It's not created in the Big Bang. It's created in the hearts of stars through fusion. And when you have a star different than, say, the stars we heard about in the first talk, which end up in white dwarfs, but you have a star 10 times as big as the sun, it will create, fu well, fu fusion will create helium from hydrogen and then heavier elements, and then it will explode, dispersing those elements into the gas creating oxygen. So that brings me to my next jargon, which is metallicity. And so even if you're talking among other astronomers, uh, you kind of have to ask them to define what they mean by metallicity, because there's uh, a range. And so for a little bit of background, galaxies are comprised of basically four components. Dark matter is the main component, gas, stars, and dust. And the gas itself has molecular uh, hydrogen, which is about 10% of the gas, and then the rest are atoms, most of which are hydrogen and helium. But you also have uh, trace amounts of metals, so oxygen. So in this case, when I say metallicity, all I mean is the number of oxygen atoms in gas divided by the number of hydrogen atoms in gas. And for the most part, that's about one oxygen atom for every thousand hydrogen atoms or so. So you might be asking, what's this have to do with beer? <laughs> And so if, if you'll allow me to, to make an analogy, if you take beer volume and equate it with galaxy mass and take the alcohol percentage in your beer, which is just the volume percentage of alcohol in, in your glass, say 4%, so that means 4% of the volume of your beer is alcohol, usually ethanol, and we'll equate it to this gas-based metallicity, the number of oxygen atoms over the number of hydrogen atoms. You have a nice analogy where fermentation, this chemical process of yeast uh, reacting with sugar, creating carbon dioxide and your alcohol, the more that happens, the higher percentage beer you have. And with supernovae, so in a galaxy you have gas, it's mostly hydrogen and helium at first. Uh, pockets of that gas is dense enough to collapse, form a cluster of stars. Some of those stars are smaller than our sun, some the size of our sun, and some big enough to explode and release oxygen back into that gas. Just like fermentation makes higher alcohol percentage, this creates higher metallicities in galaxies. And so if I'll keep this analogy going, you have same volume of beer, but very different alcohol percentages. So you have a uh, different color, but you know, a shiner level alcohol percentage and one that will probably knock you on your butt if you drink enough of it. Um, galaxies of the exact same mass can have a range of metallicities and keeping it going to eventually make a point. <laughs> <clears throat> you, 
you have small amounts if you were doing a power hour of shots of beer, all the way to if you're enjoying beer with friends or had a tough day. <laughs> and so I, I, I wouldn't be a typical astronomer if I didn't plot two things against one another and talk about it. And so to make this uh, analogy hold, I have metallicity versus galaxy mass, but I'm going to talk about it in terms of beer volume and alcohol percentage. So at small volumes, you have a galaxy that is pretty weak in its metallicity. And then as you get larger and larger, you have a very potent galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's happening here? And so, uh, like I said, uh, supernova goes off, uh, enriches the galaxy with more oxygen atoms per hydrogen atom. But when you're a smaller galaxy, that same energy, uh, no matter what galaxy you're in, that star explodes with the same amount of energy for the same size star. Um, but the smaller galaxy doesn't have enough gravity to hold all of those metals in. So some of those metals go out, you don't enrich it as much as a bigger galaxy or a higher, you know, growler size galaxy. <laughs> uh, and, and you end up with a lower percentage galaxy. So uh, with a little bit of audience participation, we live in a galaxy, the Milky Way. Does anybody have a guess of what size alcohol? <laughs> All right, so we got shot glass. We got pint. All right. We got uh, a German style leader. And uh, all right, so we got a range of volumes that were guessed. What about how potent the Milky Way is? All right, so we got 9.1. And the last thing I heard was leader. All right, so not bad. Not bad. Yeah. So more or less, the Milky Way is something like a dogfish head, 90 minute in a liter <laughs> glass. But this plot was made with galaxies today. And so if you reverse time and look at galaxies, say 10 billion years ago, you're looking at a range of galaxies. They can still span a, a wide range of masses, but they're not as potent back then. So they have less metals per mass. And, and, and that's for a couple of reasons. But you can imagine that a galaxy is going to grow with time, and its metals are going to grow with time. So you can imagine the path that that travels with time. And so this probably went somewhat quick, but I, I'll leave you with a little bit of a trivia, which has the answer already. Um, that's my fault. <laughs> so how long would it take to drink the Milky Way? I'll just go through them. So the Milky Way is a, a little bit big. It's uh, a thousand billion, 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 billion ounces. And if you had all the people on the planet uh, drinking in this participation, uh, a one, one big unity effort, each drinking three times the doctor recommended limit. <laughs> <laughs> and you gave your answer in terms of the age of the universe, just to make the number a little bit smaller. It would still take 10 to the 42 universe lifetimes. <laughs> and if you took the log 10 of that, the answer is the universe, life, and everything. Um, so, um, thanks. Short and sweet, but ask away. So do we have any questions for Cosmic Brewery? Anyone up from up top? Anyone? Oh, there you go. First one up there. Yeah. Well, it, it, if they don't have a, uh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Question, um, the question was on the uh, on this graph. There are two elements that are in silver, not corresponding to any of the colors. Um, TC and PM. Uh, as a non-chemist, I can't even tell you what those elements are. Um, uh, and the fact that they don't have one of these six origins 
means that we haven't identified the origin of those elements. So a lot of work went into this pretty graph and I can't take any credit for it. Um, but uh, essentially, um, there are also uh, a lot of high numbers that are left off of there. And those are usually not naturally occurring high, high isotopes as well. Um, I don't know if that, that's a similar event where there are just trace elements that we really don't understand other than on Earth. Thanks. Yeah? Oh, I'll let you uh, pick it up. Uh, and behind, back there. Why does the Golden Galaxy have more metal or metal and where did you come up with this crazy comparison between <laughs> here and the galaxy? Like I, I said, I, I will thank my wife. Um, <laughs> And uh, uh, so an older galaxy, uh, say you start with the same amount of gas. <clears throat> and an older galaxy just literally has more time to condense in pockets, form star clusters, and have a big massive star go supernovae. So say a galaxy is 10 billion years old, um, like we heard before, a star that's 10 times the mass of the sun, is it actually going to have a relatively short lifetime compared to that, 10 to 30 million years? It will explode, enhance, and the more times that process happens, uh, actually it becomes a little bit more efficient for that gas to collapse. Uh, metals help with losing energy and collapsing faster. And, and so an older galaxy, and likely a more massive galaxy at times, uh, is going to have more oxygen atoms from those supernovae compared to the number of hydrogen atoms. And, and the other process that happens is the lower mass stars when you form these star clusters, low mass stars live very long. And so uh, both the gas that it started with, all that hydrogen, is just locked up in the stars. It, it transformed into something else, but it's not in that gas anymore. And so the, the longer a galaxy lives, you have those two processes that kind of bump up the alcohol percentage of that galaxy. <laughs> uh, right here, down front. Well, I, so not only is star formation, so gas collapsing into the stars, not fully efficient, but <clears throat> let's say uh, you turned all the gas perfectly into just the single kind of star that will explode and enrich. Uh, you, you'll level out, actually, you're still going to release hydrogen. Uh, the, that big massive star still had an edge envelope of hydrogen. And uh, it has a single percentage of oxygen. There, there are other elements that are in there that, that explode. And so that ratio will top out at that exact level. Now, stars form where there are more small stars than big stars. And then essentially you have an effective top out level. And none of the galaxies are actually really even close to that. Um, and, and that's because there are competing effects as, essentially um, the same way that uh, fermentation tops out where the alcohol stops the process of continuing fermentation. It's, it, it inhibits the, the reaction. Uh, more metals that you have, uh, it's kind of kind of similar process. Because you, you, you're exploding, you're, you're disrupting the possibility to do those explosions again. And down in front. OK, so approximately 9.1-ish percent. We're looking at an 18.2 proof galaxy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I would say the Milky Way would be a pretty tasty 9.1%. <laughs> uh, and with that, let's thank Cosmic Brewery again. <laughs>